do this today in a reasonable amount of time. I don't want to keep y'all here any longer than the Spirit does say. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go back to our scripture this morning. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And I'll read it again from the New King James Version. It just says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct <coughs> your path. And this has been my favorite verse from a very, very, very long time ago. The first time I read it and memorized it. It's just, just stuck in my spirit that, uh, that this was an anchor verse for me. Anchor verse. When that storm starts coming, Chuck that over the side, and it holds me right in place, right where God would have me to be in that storm. In that storm, amen. I ride that storm out, not without without care or concern, but trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. And as a young man, as a younger man, I once sat down with <laughs> a gentleman who uh, whom I met, and he. He was sitting down with the, the singles group that I was in in Southern California. And he was taking everybody, bringing everybody. He was sitting in the room and he brought all of us in one at a time. He asked us what our favorite verse was. And he would point out something about that verse. God was just using it to, to show us you know, things from that. And I sat down with him and felt pretty confident because I, I felt pretty confident about that. <laughs> He's going to ask me you know, what my favorite verse is. And, and it was absolutely still in my anchor verse. He says, um, what, 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 what is it? I, I recited to him. I said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall direct your path. He said, well, what's the most important verse, words? What's the most important word in, in, those, in, those, in those two verses you just said? And I looked him right in the face. I said, trust. I said, trust. He said, no. Oh, okay. Well, then, must be understanding. Ha! Lean not to your own understanding. He said, no. I said, uh, Acknowledge? No. That's three strikes. I'm out. What, 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 what is it then? He said, all. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And then not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Oh my God. And he shall direct your path. Give it all to God. It takes all. It takes all. Oh, you can't go wrong giving God. Oh. But our focus today is going to be on that word, trust. <laughs> and trust is a trust is a touchy subject. We as human beings value trust. We cherish trust. We use trust as a shield, a weapon. Faith is supposed to be the shield. A shield of faith is what's supposed to protect us. But we use trust as an inadvertent shield. We as humans, we tell people, oh, you gotta earn my trust. You gotta earn my trust. Well, it's a good thing we didn't have to earn God's trust. Amen. Because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, what did we do to earn God's trust? Nothing but be created. As believers, nothing but give our lives to God. And at that point, he trusted us. He trusted us before that. He trusts us with so much. He trusts us with funds. He trusts us to have the job that we have. He trusts us. If he didn't trust us, he wouldn't give us anything. Just like the parable of the talents, the, 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 the master trusted his three servants, each with a certain amount, one, five, and ten. He trusted them. He didn't just trust them to, to hold on to it, because we know that just holding on to it wasn't enough. When he came back, he trusted that they would use it. He trusted that they would do something with it. He trusts us with, God trusts us with the gifts. He trusts us with calling. He trusts us with his word. His precious word. In the beginning. The word has been with him from the beginning. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. The word was with God. And he 
entrusts us with it. He imparts it to us. He reveals it to us. He speaks to us through it. He trusts us. But what do we do to earn his trust? Nary a nothing thing. We don't treat people like that. You've got to earn my trust. Or the Bible says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It says, you go out doing. Not concerned about how people are going to treat you. You go out doing. And if it says, do unto others as you would have them do unto them, then you kind of have to trust them. Not in a blind Naive, like I said, like we said last week, nobody's gonna come tell you and tell you the sky is blue or the sky is green and the grass is blue and you, oh, I trust you. No, 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 no. It's not anything like that. Our trust has to first be in God. Because what is the, the root of how we as human beings use trust? What's at the root of trust? Hurt. Hurt. Why do we put up that shield? Why do we use trust as that crutch? Because we don't want to be hurt. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want to be tricked. We don't want to be hoodwinked. We don't want to be bamboozled. We don't want any of those negative things to happen to us. So we choose not to trust. We choose to trust selectively. Or we choose to trust on our own terms. Or we choose not to trust at all. Right. But trust is key. Trust in any relationship is ever, ever, ever so key. Trust, just like everything else in the Bible. We learned that last week that God wants us to love because love is our his calling card. By the way we as believers love one another, all men will know that we are his disciples. Love is God's calling card. But we also learn that love matures us when we choose to love. When we choose to put away childish things, when we choose to put away speaking as a child, behaving as a child, understanding as a child, responding to situations as a child. We choose to respond in the way that God has us to do so in love, patience, kindness, long-suffering, in all of those things, not self-centered, not puffed up. If we choose to behave and react and respond in love, we are demonstrating maturity. Not based upon our age, not based upon how long we've been saved, not based upon how many Sunday services we attend in a calendar year, based on how we demonstrate the love that God has put there for us. Love matures us. So what does trust do? Trust frees us. Trust frees us. There's so much that we gain just by trust. Even in the Word, it says, trust in the Lord and, uh, with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Trust gets us out of the way. Gets us out of the way so that so that God can direct our paths. In another version it says, and he will make your paths straight. So God can direct us and get us to where we need to go. We hinder God's progress in our life when we fail to trust, when we fail to trust him first. We fail to trust him first. If we trust in God to be who he is, then all the care and concern that we have about deceptive people, about people trying to get over, all of that will go away. All of that will go away. That will no longer be a concern. That will be a minor bump on your major journey. Trust the Lord first. If God is so powerful, if we can trust him, just like those two songs that we sang, I will trust you through the storm, through the storm, not whining and crying and trembling and shaking while the storm is going on. Not while you're in the boat and the storm's going on and you're waking up, Jesus, we're about to die and you don't even care. Don't you care? No. Trust is getting through that storm. Getting through that storm without being worried. Without being concerned for your own life. That sounds, that's, that's kind of out there. 
That's kind of out there, right? We, but we trust God. We sing that he is protector, protector. We sing that song, that God is our protector. But as God, that's one of the things that we least trust God to be in our lives. Protector. Provider. Provider, provider is easy if you got a job. Yeah. Provider is easy. Fairly, fairly easy. Provider's up there. Healer, we, we healer. Healer, we can believe healer. Because we, we're gonna get sick. And, but protector, that's the one we take on for ourselves. We take on protector for ourselves. No, God, I mean, we, I, I, and, and again, where it says, trust the Lord with all your heart. But we take that portion back. We take back protector. We take back protector because we got, we got to protect ourselves. Because there's sometimes when we don't feel God near. Like the song said. <laughs> when, you, when I don't feel you. If I call on your name and I don't feel you near. Will you trust? Can I trust? We take protector back. We can't protect ourselves better than God. We can't protect ourselves better than God. That's the equivalent to us sitting inside a bunker with four Navy SEALs sitting around us inside a bunker with armed Marines on the outside Apache helicopters flying over, and you got F-15, 16s, and 22 circling, and above that, you got B-52 and B-2 bombers going on. Who can permeate that? Not too many people. You should feel safe. That's how we should feel if God is protecting us. Amen. That's how well God protects us. But we step out. Sorry. We, we, we stand down the Navy SEALs. We go outside the bunker. We don't stop outside the bunker. We tell the, the Marines, the armed Marines, outside at ease. Stand down. Go back to your barracks. I got this. Helicopters, bring it down. Aircraft, all your aircraft, bring it down. I got this. And then you pick up a loaded squirt gun. Not even a super soaker. Super soakers hurt. Can hurt. You can put an eye out. You can give somebody a bruise on their leg. You don't even pick up a super soaker. You got your dollar store squirt gun. Half loaded. We do that. And the thing is out. You holding it down and water's leaking out. But you walking around confident. Come on. Come on. What you got? Uh huh. Step up. Step up. Son, get some of this. But that's how we act. Yes, it is. That's how we act. You got to earn our trust. I'm not letting you hurt me. I'm not letting you hurt me. You're not getting over on me. I got this. Everybody comes up to you. Got you. Don't even try it. Get back in the bunker. Get the bunker. Mm. Tell the Navy SEALs, look, now look. Get the Marines back out there. Loaded with extra ammo. Yes, get those yes, helicopters yes. flying back over. And when those get low on fuel, some more come up and are in the air so that they're so that they're at, the, at no time is there not an Apache helicopter in the air over you. Same with the F-15, 16s, and 22s. Fighter aircraft, some of the best and most powerful fighter aircraft in the world. The bombers, get back in that bunker. And trust the Lord. Get back in that bunker. And trust the Lord. Turn with me real fast to Daniel. Daniel chapter 6.
Daniel chapter 6 is the account of Daniel. And this is during the time when the nation of Israel had come under Babylonian captivity. And the Babylonian ruler had taken of the best and brightest of the young people and brought them into his camp and had begun training them to become vital parts of his, his government, his ruling society. And Daniel and his friend had chosen not to partake of the food of the king. They didn't fast for a number of days. They changed their lifestyle in order to preserve themselves from being contaminated by the best that the king had to offer. Daniel finds himself in a position of authority. And in doing so, he has haters. <laughs> we don't find any place in here where Daniel spent any time concerned, worried about, arguing with his haters. We don't find any, any accounts in there. Where Daniel is standing out in the street Again, challenging them. You want some? You quit hating. Don't hate, appreciate. Try to get where I am. There's none of that. None of that going on. How's Daniel spend his time? Pray. Daniel spends his time talking to God. So now the haters, yeah. the haters, they devise a plan. You know what? We hate Daniel. <laughs> That's what haters do. Hey, we hate Daniel. We, we got to get Daniel out of here. So they go to the king and get the king to sign a decree that you can't pray to anybody but him. Anyone caught praying to a god other than that's not the king, you're going to be thrown in the lion's den. The king had no idea. So Daniel knows the decree. Daniel's ready to decree. He's not doing this in secret or out of ignorance. Daniel knows the decree. Daniel goes back to his place and Daniel prays and he says he prays faithfully. Daniel knew what the decree was. Daniel prayed as he prayed before. He says Daniel went to him. He prayed three times a day in his place. He said he prayed with the windows open. Open. Not hiding. He did that before the decree. After the decree, Daniel prayed in the same manner. He didn't change anything. He didn't let that deter him because he loved the Lord so, because he trusted the Lord so. So the haters, they go get Daniel. They bring him before the king. He's guilty. The king says, Daniel, you know what? I hate to do this. It's the decree. I need the decree. I got to put you in with the lions. Nowhere, nowhere do we see in this passage that Daniel cried out, Help! My bad. Okay, you know what? Um, for this, for the 30 days, I, I just won't pray. I prayed enough. God, God will understand. God will understand. No. Daniel, he didn't fight. Daniel went in the lion's den. They threw him in the lion's den. Daniel trusted God so hard that in the midst of the lion's den, and these aren't just lions, these are hungry lions. They don't feed these lions all the time. Because when they throw people in there, they want those people destroyed. They want those people torn apart. They want those people to suffer. So when they get thrown in, the lions are just ravenous upon the people. But this did not happen to Daniel. And you got thrown in the lion's den. Now, I know that if I had been thrown in a lion's den, <laughs> I'm leery right away. First, where are all the lions? Can I get to a high place? It doesn't matter. Because <laughs> lions can leap 
to just about any tall, many great heights above what they stand. So I'm trying to find a high place. At least I can defend myself in that matter and only have to deal with one at a time. Daniel, down in the lion's den, went to sleep. Get out of town brown. What? In the midst of lions, Daniel went to sleep. So the king comes down the next day. He ran down the next morning. Daniel, Daniel, are you still alive? Yes. Brings him out. <laughs> Makes a great declaration for the Lord. But then he turns to the haters. And the king has the haters thrown into the lion's den. And the word says that before they, they didn't even get to hit the ground yet. They didn't even hit the ground. And the lions tore their bones apart. Tore them apart. They, were, they don't even know what it's like to fall from that height and hit the ground. They didn't even know. They didn't even get that pleasure. Didn't even get to hit the ground. They didn't get to get the fall and get knocked out. Soon as they got pushed in, teeth. Teeth. But this is how it wasn't just them. It was their family. Yeah, it was their families too. Wives and children. But the whole point of it is that Daniel trusted God. Mm -hmm. That nothing was going to deter him from praying, from talking to God. Mm -hmm. Even what he did, he did it diligently, he did it faithfully, he did it in the same manner as before the decree was made. Mm -hmm. Openly, he didn't hide, he didn't let it change his relationship with God at all. Trusted God that hard. Pressed into God so and spoke so diligently and, and, and just formally and formally with God. How do you, how do you get ready to a lion's den? Knowing what your fate is supposed to be. Knowing that no one expects you to come out of there. Your demise is the purpose for this whole situation. This cat is asleep. Had the best night's sleep. <laughs> Probably had a six or seven hundred pound fluffy pillow under his head. Big old lion. You know, the big mane and everything. He's just all said, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. He had a sleep number lion, if you will. He got a little cold. Another one probably snuggled up on him or whatever. But he was in the best place he could be. In the lion's den. Because he trusted God. And he was able to sleep. He trusted God. He didn't get down in there and start questioning God. Oh Lord, I prayed to you all these days. I talk to you every day. In spite of the decree, I still prayed to you. But you brought me before this king. And now I'm convicted. And now I'm down here in this lion's den. Lord, I need you to deliver me. No. But it didn't end there. Back forward a few chapters. Back forward, that even makes sense. Go up to uh, chapter <laughs> three. And this is the account of the three Hebrew boys. The three Hebrew boys who said that they would not worship King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar put them in a high pay, in a high position, promoted them. They're in a high place. You would think they would have a certain amount of gratitude to the king. But again, another decree goes out that when the music plays, 
the hearts when the music plays, everyone will bow down and worship the gigantic statue that they had built in Nebuchadnezzar. Everyone was expected to bow down and worship this idol, this 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 image of the king. The three Hebrew boys, who along with Daniel wouldn't partake of the best of what the king had, chose not to. And then when the decree goes out that everyone will worship the image of Nebuchadnezzar, no, we can't do that. If I'm not going to eat of the best of his table, then I'm certainly not going to bow down and worship him. I have a God already. <laughs> and he's a good God. I, I have a God already. And again, they're brought before the king, and, 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 and he, was, he was pretty upset. You know what? You won't worship me? I got something for you. I got a flaming oven for you. Uh, a, 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 a furnace. But you know what? Y'all, I put y'all in a high place, and y'all defy me in such a way Turn it up. Make it hotter. Make the furnace hotter. Okay. It's all good. And I'm going to read through the entire account. Verses 13 through 18. <laughs> Excuse me. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a rage, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? <laughs> now, if you are ready, at the time, you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyra, and the psaltery, in symphony <laughs> with all kinds of music and you fall down and worship the image which I have made good <clears throat> but if you do not worship you shall be immediately but if you do not worship you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning furnace and who is the God <laughs> who will deliver you from my hands. Oh my goodness. Oh Nebuchadnezzar, if you only knew. If you oh, he is, it is he is in a rage and a fury. He will give him one more chance. If you will worship, good. But if not, then this God that you choose to worship instead of me, who's gonna save you from my hands? Because that's who I am. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, <laughs> O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. We're not even going to argue with you. We're not going <laughs> to... We're not going to give you the, 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 the honor of an answer. <laughs> In verse 17, if that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Oh, you want to know who my God is? If that be the case, <laughs> yeah, he's able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. And he's able to deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the image that you have set up. Wow! <laughs> Who is this God we serve that, that, that is so much more deserving of our worship than you? Because he is able to deliver us. We worship him because he is able to deliver us from your hand, O king. Because he is able. He didn't stop there. That's right. That wasn't enough. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we don't serve your gods. <laughs> Fiery furnace or not, we don't serve your gods. Nor will we worship the gold image that you have set up. So that in the absence of anything else, O Nebuchadnezzar, you don't deserve my worship. Your gods don't deserve my worship. 
but my God does. And he is able, but even if he doesn't, that's the fine print on the contract. Even if he doesn't, we will still not worship your gods because they're not worthy. They're not able. They're not worthy or able. Willing, whatever. A dead God can't be willing anyway. Definitely be unable. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. And the expression on his face was changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nope, not, now he's not even going to give him another chance. It's just, now you diss me. Right here, in front of me, in front of everybody. That's how, that's, that's how hard this statement was. That even if God doesn't save us from this fire, we won't serve you. We won't serve you and we won't serve your gods. Big dad. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than was usually heated. And then he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning furnace, bound them up, tied them up. They weren't trying to get away. They weren't fighting. But they bound him up anyway. This king is doing the best that he can do to inflict all that he can upon them. These men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their own garments and were cast into the midst of the fiery furnace. What's the significance of that? They had on a bunch of layers of clothes that were sure and guaranteed to catch fire. They were set up to fail. No, they were set up to burn. Is what they were. They were set up. They didn't. They didn't take any. The only way it could have been worse is they had dipped them in oil and 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 then thrown them in. But see, the king was confident in his seven times hotter fire, and that's all he needed to do because he was the king, and he had decreed that these men must die. And he commanded the mighty men of valor to bind them. And they, and they had on their, their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their, and their other garments. They had all this other stuff that was guaranteed to catch fire. And they were cast in to the burning, fiery furnace. <laughs> Verse 22, therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Wow. Dang. That's a hot fire. That's a hot fire. The dudes that's carrying them up to throw them in, they didn't do anything wrong. They, they, were, they were serving the king. They just did what he told them to do. But that fire was so hot that it killed them. And you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're in the fire. Verse 23, it says, these, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. So they're in there. As far as King knows, you know what? They're on their way. It's about to happen now. Everybody's going to know that I am King. And if you don't worship me, that's it. If you don't worship our God, that's it. I am the final say. I am better than this God that they chose to worship over me because he didn't save them. Because he didn't save them. They're in the fire now. I can never connect them above all just because I made this happen. Verse 24. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. <laughs> and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men, three, three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. It doesn't say hours passed. It doesn't say minutes passed. It doesn't say how long it was. But here it is, just in the succession of time. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. Soon as he's just getting ready to bask in the glory of his kingdom and authority and being above all gods and being above the god of these three men who foolish enough not to worship me. Oh, but then now he's astonished and he rose up in haste and said, Whoa, did we not throw three men? And he saw the guys die who threw them in. And 
his men answered him, true, O king, look. He answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. And they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. Did you hear me when I read it? I said yes. they are walking in the fire, yes. in the midst of the fire. The they are not hurt. Hallelujah. They trusted God Hallelujah. so hard. Yes, Lord. So hard that God you, Lord. didn't prevent them from being brought before the king. Thank you. Didn't prevent false accusations. Actually, true accusations. Didn't prevent true. I won't even say accusations. Didn't prevent them from going before the king guilty of what the king had declared in me. Didn't stop God. Well, if God loved them, then why did he even let them be caught? If God loved them, I would never can ever know that God is more powerful than all his gods and he himself. If God just hides them. If God just puts them in a place and they choose them not to worship. Hallelujah. How does Nebuchadnezzar not know that that God is worthy of trust? Yes. How does Nebuchadnezzar not know? He'll never know. He'll, never, he'll go on thinking that his gods are the bomb, thinking that he's all that in a bag of chips. He'll go on thinking that. Well, if God is, if God loved him so much, then <coughs> why did they have to go into the fire? <coughs> why did he just put the fire out? Why did he just, you know, send an angel down to slay everybody? And, and, and you know, that way, because that could be explained. That could be explained. Jesus. That somehow unbeknownst to anybody, men snuck in with swords and freed them. Well, that, that can be explained. And Nebuchadnezzar and all his faithful people that are willing to die throwing somebody into a fire for him, they can come up with an answer for that. And all the subjects, they have, they have to believe, they have to receive it. Well, why didn't did God take the heat out of the fire? No, he didn't. Because the ones who threw it in died. So the fire was still hot. How do we know the fire was still hot? It burned the ropes. They were bound. Ropes didn't just disappear. That fire was hot. It burned the ropes off of them. How do we know? Because the king himself saw them walking around in the furnace. Not just him, but Jesus. Hallelujah. He declared, and the fourth one is like the Son of God. Jesus. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego standing at the mouth of this burning, hot furnace. So, King, we have no need to answer you in this matter. We really have, we're not going to post an argument. We're not going to try to defend ourselves. But since you brought God into this, since you wanted to go there, challenging my God, who we choose to worship over you, since you did it, if this be the case, our God, whom we serve, who we choose to serve, who we choose to worship, who we will bow down before, but not you or any of your fake puny gods. He is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. He delivered them from that. They went in and walked around when they should have just died. They should have never known again, just like the family of the haters of Daniel, who, when they were thrown into the lion's pit, never even felt the ground. It was just all teeth pulling on them. Just... <laughs> they should never have known what the bottom of that furnace felt like. They should never have known. They should have been dead before they even got in there. Because the 
people who shoved him in died. Yes. So they should never have even made it inside of there. He should have never seen one single body moving. He shouldn't see anything moving inside that furnace except for the fire. And because these three trusted God, so diligent with such fervency that they can make that declaration while they're standing before what should be their destruction they believe they didn't have an angel come down and forewarn them y'all gonna go in the fire okay but you're gonna be okay but Jesus is gonna come in and walk around with you don't say nothing don't say nothing <laughs> they didn't have that they didn't have that full warning. But they had the trust right. of a mighty God. Right. The trust of a mighty God to be able to stand and declare, just like we sing up here, I will trust. And what it felt like so deep in our soul to be able to say, I trust in such a mighty God who is worthy to trust the, the same God that delivered these three from the fire. To the point where Jesus went in to walk around with him. To the point where he let Daniel be able to be able to sleep in a den of lions. For us to be able to declare that, they didn't have that. They were living it. They were setting us up for faith. Not failure, but faith. They were setting us up to trust that same God. Everything that they went through. This is Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace. He had to know right there that God was protecting him. He went near the mouth of the furnace. The last people that went near the mouth of the furnace died. Because they were pushing in people who weren't even supposed to be in there. The last people who went near the mouth of the furnace. But he was so shaken. <laughs> he went from furious he already went from angry and rage. Now, then he went from full of fury to astonished. And now it says he went near the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. <laughs> now they're servants of the Most High God. Just not even a few minutes ago, they were infidels. They were infidels. You old disrespectful or whatever, you know, I put you in a high place and you won't worship me. You're going to see who God is. You're going to learn today. You're going to find out who your God is. No, Nebuchadnezzar, you are. You are going to find out who God is. Come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego came from the midst of the fire and the satraps and the administrators and the governors and the king's counselors gathered together. That was a lot of people on hand. <laughs> and they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. That's how we know there was still heat in that fire. That's how we know the fire was still on there. The, the, the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Nor were their garments affected. And the smell of fire was not on them. You can't walk through a casino here without coming out smelling like smoke. Like you just sat in there and smoked a case of cigarettes all by yourself. But they were in the midst of a fiery furnace walking around with Jesus all up in the midst because they trusted God so hard. And when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. Is that a God worth trusting? Nobody but God. They trusted him that hard. They trusted him before the fire. They trusted him before the decree. Yes. They trusted him before. Yes. Hallelujah. Before all of that. Yes. And they saw it. That trust of God saw them through. That's how you get through the storm. That's how you get through the fire. That's how you get through hard times. Trust the Lord. You have to trust 
him. You have to trust him with all your heart. Like it says, with all your heart. You can't be concerned with protecting yourself. Daniel didn't say a word to protect himself. Daniel didn't say one word to protect himself. He didn't throw out any curses. The Lord God is going to strike you down for throwing me into it. No. He went down in the den and went to sleep. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego at the edge of the furnace. Trusting God so much. <laughs> you, O oh king, no, 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 no. You're not the one. You're not deserving of worship. You're not deserving of everything that you think you are deserving of. And you with your giant, I don't know. We won't worship you. God, but our God whom we serve, whom we choose to serve, whom in whom we trust, is able to deliver us. But if not, if he chooses not to, we don't make that declaration today. <laughs> We're not willing to deal with the but if not. I knew I wouldn't hear the amens off of that. <laughs> we, we're slow <laughs> with the but if not. Well, help us out of that. And it goes back to what we talked about before. About calling God protector. Mm -hmm. We know that he is. And we can declare that he is. But in the realm of trusting God with all of our heart, <laughs> if, there's, if there's panels to our heart, if there's cards to our heart, we put them all up and we're trusting God in that manner with the one that says protector on it, that's, that's in our pocket. We got protector. We got protector. And then we wonder why we go through the storm and we begin to sink. And then we, we wonder why we, we go into the fire and it's hot. Man, it's hot in here. Woo, woo. Lord, Lord, I need, oh, Father, why, why did you allow us to have to come into this, into this fire? Uh, because our declaration prior to going in the fire is, well, I don't know what I would do in that situation. All right, man. Our declaration prior to the fire It's anything but I will trust. I will trust. It's anything but that. It's all this other stuff. It's all this other stuff. Take the card out of your pocket and put it back in with the rest of them. Put it back in with the rest of them. Put it right in between Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah my protector. I'm right back in its slot. Get back in the bunker. Get back in the bunker. We can't even have clothes to protect ourselves as well as God can protect us. And to see, that's that's where that's where we make the mistake. We think that God's not protecting us because we get hurt. That's right. That's right. We think that God's not protecting us. He is, yes, he is. But if he never intended for us to get hurt, if the if the non-wasteful God, if, if the purposeful in all things God never intended us for us to be hurt. Why would he send unto us a comfort? Hallelujah. If he never intended for us to get hurt, if his whole purpose for us to walk this earth was to let our light so shine, was for us to live so holy and to be so protected by him, if that was the whole entire purpose for our being here on earth, then there would be no need for us to have the comforter dwelling within us. Dwelling within us, God is so purposeful. You know that there's a creature out there called the gecko. Yes. You pull its tail off and it grows back another one. Yes. <laughs> you know what? If I cut my arm off, I wish I could grow another arm. I can get a prosthetic. I can get all this other stuff, but I haven't grown back a, a whole another one. That's how God restores us. That's how he wants us to be reminded 
that anything we lose, he can replace. That anything that's damaged, he can restore. Any hurt that comes upon us, he can comfort. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to Amen. his name. Amen. God, God is neosporin. It stings a little bit sometimes. God is hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> he's all of that good stuff. He's a he's a tight bandage. He's a cast. He's all of that stuff. You break an arm, and in order for it to heal right, the doctor has to set the bones back in place. And that might hurt to get them bones set back in place. I, I broke a bone when I was a little kid, way, way little, and I don't, even, I don't remember a single bit of it. And when my mom tells the story, that I, the, I can't remember exactly where it was um, broken, but I was cool. The arm was broken, and the initial shock of pain was gone, and I was sitting there, and the doctor came in to, to set it, and that just reignited the whole fire, apparently. Because it took a couple guys to hold me down, and but the pain <laughs> it was revisited. But in order to do that, in order for it to heal properly, for me to have all of this still, <laughs> had to go through a little bit of pain. Oh, yes. But after the pain was gone, we were full function. Restored. Restored. Trust and hurt. Trust and hurt. If they're still mentioned in the same sentence with us, then we're not fully, we're not trusting God with all our heart. If we're still withholding trust, and again, I'm not talking about walking around being cold. I'm talking about being easily fooled, anything like that, beguiled, any of that other stuff. I'm talking about first and foremost, trusting. God, believing him to be who he is, trusting God. You have to have a strong, mighty, and powerful, rooted foundation in order to be able to stand at a hot fire and declare the goodness of God. And to put it out there that even if he doesn't, you're still not worthy to be worshipped. You're still not worthy to be worshipped because my God is still better than you. If I die, God is still better than you. If I get burned to ashes beyond recognition to where there's nothing left, you are still not better than God. Your gods that you serve are not worthy of my worship. Whether I die or not, I've missed out on nothing. I've missed out on Nothing. Say that. All I've missed out on is worshiping a dead God. And a king who's going to die. Mm. My God is worthy. Our God whom we serve. Yes. Amen. Is Amen. able. Yes. <laughs> yes. Our God whom we serve is able. But if not. But if not, trust God. Take hurt out of the equation. Trust God and take hurt out of the equation. First John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love. That's right. Perfect love casts out fear. There is no fear in love. But we fear getting hurt. You fear it. It's a natural thing. That's what's built into our flesh. <laughs> fear is built into our flesh. Some points us it's helpful. So it, it, God put it there for a reason. He gave us. He gave it to us. That fear is there. Fear is an emotion. So so it has its purpose in our lives, but its purpose is not to rule. It's to keep us cautious in certain situations. Mm -hmm. So we're just not running around, you know, dark alleys <laughs> where we're not supposed to be. Where it's not wise to, to just go hanging out down in there. Keeps us out of those kind of situations. But fear is never meant to drive. Because it'll drive you right off the cliff. It'll drive you right away from God. It'll drive you right into a burning fire. It'll drive you right into lion's teeth. 
fear. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. If we love God and trust him to be who he is, we don't have to be concerned with our haters. God's going to take care of them. He's going to take care of them. They don't understand that if you set yourself up against God and the people who serve him, to where you're having to connive and set up stuff so that they can't do what it is that they need to do or want to do before him. What, what happened to Daniel's haters? They got thrown into the pit. They didn't even get to touch the floor. Lions got them. Not just them, but their families. So the haters don't know. <laughs> and if Daniel stands in the way, Daniel defends himself. Daniel decides to take matters into his own hands. God can't do what he needs to do. He can't do what he needs to do. He can't show that king. He can't show that king that I'm worthy of worship. That I am the one. That I'm the only one deserving of that kind of worship. If Daniel stands up and he defends himself, or he just gets mad and goes off on all those, on all, all his haters. Skip all of y'all. You know what? God's going to get you. I'm going down to this lion's den, but you know what? I hope you choke on my bones. Something something crazy like that. You could have made all them kind of crazy declarations, but as soon as you do that, you're taking God right out of the picture. You're taking that mighty God right out of the picture. You're taking all that capability, all the things that you say you trust in, Trust in him and believe him to be able to do. Taking it right out of the picture. Again, stepping out of the bunker. With your half-loaded squirt gun. And leaking. Half-loaded leaking squirt gun. And, and, and you're taking on armies. Trying to take on armies. Not just armies, wild animals. And any other thing that can come to try to take us out. Get back in the bunker. Trust God. Stop worrying about being hurt. Amen. Know that when hurt comes, there's a comforter. Amen. Run to the comforter. Don't Amen. run from hurt. Amen. David, little David ran to a giant. Amen. But we run from little hurts. Don't run from little hurts. Diss the little hurts because you have a comforter. Because you have a comforter. Just like the Avengers, the guys that Loki said, I have armies. I have powerful armies, blah, blah, blah. Tony Stark said, we have a Hulk. <laughs> he had full confidence in that. You look at the enemy. I trust God. I have comfort. I have comfort. Trust God. Amen? Amen. Give God some praise today.